Oh no, not introduction is again, please. Mm-hmm. Your favorite. Please no. Please no. <laughs> think, think, think about how you want to introduce yourself. No, I can't do that. You can. <laughs> it's too hard. All right. Hello and welcome back for the fifth episode of the Octopod, a long time coming. Priority pull list version two with all of the current units that we do not have that JP does have. It's finally here after years and years of daily asks of where the hell this is to both me and Prim, maybe even to Grape. Uh, but yeah, not. here we are. You never got any. You never got any pings asking where the fuck it was. No, I blocked everyone who did. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done that yeah, too. Actual Chad behavior. <laughs> so of course, if you have not listened to one of these before, my name is Dream. This is my channel, and I am joined by my two co-hosts that have been here for the other podcasts as well. First of all, we have Prim is my ex. Hello, Prim. Say hello. Hello. Beautiful. Actually, actually, your best one so far. And then we also oh, yeah. have Grape, our resident JP god. Hello. I've spent a bit much um, on this game. <laughs> I regret it, but at least I have something to talk about now. Hell yeah. And uh, we will be your three hosts for today. We'll be going through the pull priority. As with the last one, we are not making you a tier list, so do not just skip to the end of the video and go, okay, these are the good units, goodbye. The whole point of this video is to be a long-winded explanation on why things are good pulls, why they are maybes, why they're in between, what makes them good, what makes them bad, so that way you can make informed decisions yourself on what you want to pull based on characters you like and kits that you are trying to take advantage of. Uh, because this is kind of coming from the perspective of three players who basically pull on every single good unit. So uh, not <laughs> basically not the every man. You're not going to be able to pull for every single good unit. Uh, but you will be able to make uh, good informed decisions on what units you do want to pull based on your luck and your ruby count and your, uh, your wallet amount. <laughs> All right. And then some things we talked about before clicking the record button when I should have just been <laughs> raw recording you guys. There are some things that make this list different than the last one. And one of those being that Global has <laughs> decided that they're just going to go off the wall. They obviously watched our last video. And anything that we put in the maybe or the skip category ended up getting crazy buffs. And that ended up pulling a lot of characters up from the depths. Including making Roland a top tier unit and making Frederica an A4 crazy unit. So with all of that in mind, anything can change. Uh, Global is not afraid to buff things. We have the Taiwan server now. That gives us a little bit of a peek into what we're going to get. Um, Canary just happened, came out in Taiwan first buffed, and Global ended up getting the exact same buffs. So with Taiwan giving us that few week head start into Global buffs along with what we know came out in JP, you know, keep in mind that anything we say can change. Um, Live Alive is coming out in Taiwan very soon. And so we will see if any of those characters end up getting buffs. So keep all of that in mind. As always, if stuff does get buffed, there will be conversations about each of these, either uh, in my community notes or in the discords for the community, where people will debate, you know, if the buffs were warranted enough to make them change tiers, basically. Yeah, uh, and also you're, you're probably going to make a pull video, right? Come on. True. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I make pull videos that. for weird shit at this point. I made a pull video for <laughs> Lavinia. <laughs> Lavanya. Lavanya. I want to call her Lavanya so bad. You have no idea. You, you did. You, you I know. Did I call her that time. every time. <laughs> Near reincarnation, even though it is EOSing, will forever be in my heart because I will always call any character with anything close to a similar name Lavanya from now on. Another thing we want to bring up is six stars and kind of the gap that six stars have between six stars and five stars. Just from levels, um, you get. 20 extra levels so that's 20 extra levels worth of base stats i think and... the average i think the average stat gain uh for mm. for the attack step like for for example physical attackers from what i see mm. is like 60. it's like for, for the lesser so like an invested pet less. basically <laughs> yeah it's like and free accessory slots as opposed to two. Oh, that's part of six star i thought that was just something everybody yes. got <laughs> no 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 oh geez that's okay yeah, that's a huge thing. But again, like, you know, even right now, like, a lot of really good characters don't have their six star yet. So it's like. Mm. You also get a uh, plus damage cap, right? Like natural damage cap? Oh, yeah, 30k worth of that. 
Like, Jesus, and almost a, an Awakening 3 in HP, it looks like, on a lot of them. Yes. <laughs> Which is why, you know, especially since the content didn't get quote-unquote harder, like, it's not hitting harder uh, overall, like, uh, at least most of the old content, it, like, A3, it makes A3, like, less important. Right. That's good. Unless damage catches up again, which I think yeah. it will. But, it it probably will. No. Okay, so lots of free base stats that basically put you in a whole different tier of of being able to hit. I've seen some crazy videos of like six to eight multi-hit new characters just popping off for 450k a line. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, did. I think I sent that um, tat lock um phase two video in prems this called uh was that uh, of um your mother was a hamster girl yes that's the one. yeah average 400k per hit on a seven hit yeah <laughs> uh, um yeah and that's just one turn you can you can do that twice in a row and the only reason it's 400k is because the cap is 400k yeah you can i mean if you have enough like busted items, you can do like five mil with one character in one turn. Is there anything else that you think we should bring up before getting into the tier list? We'll be talking about how much each of this, each of these things affect each of these characters as we go through, because um, it definitely affects some more than others. But yeah, so, so we can talk about that assumed gap. Like how wide, how wide is that gap? I mean, assuming that uh, let's assume that you know almost everyone's pulling odo o and maybe not everyone's pulling out Ar like i don't know what the ruby situation is right but like that most gap... people have saved for sisters i would say yeah if, from what i've seen in in global i just think it's kind of at, at this point it's kind of rough because i i don't think um maybe uh, maybe i'm more speaking for myself but i don't think everyone expected that they'd release so many bangers in celestia yeah yeah <laughs> So like they had a pattern every... before of like yeah here's a banger yeah. here's some here's some like meh characters yeah maybe we'll buff them for global here's a yeah. banger here's some meh maybe we'll buff them for global and so global kind of had to wait to see what got buffed and what didn't but now it's just yeah. kind of like banger 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 <laughs> well, that's what happened in JP like at, look what when size Lucy started they had like eh units and then like and like gem pool and stuff and then yeah and then they, they're like, they okay they're like screw this standard. you know whatever <laughs> banger 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 and then they have like one or two okay-ish characters like like maybe rike or something most people yeah don't think she's they it. went 16 limited before another gen pool recently <laughs> so <Jesus>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the That's banger cool. the, the banger rate is like so much higher than our mts like i thought it would be roughly equivalent but no so my point is like it's really hard for us to recommend most players pull for all three eos this is just like a heavy commitment into sword can you explain right. what you mean when you say eos by the way sorry <laughs> um <laughs> Elrica, odio o and Cezantos, the yeah. three swordsmen the three swordsmen three we expect years. before 3.0 <laughs> in global yeah Yep. So they're going to be really strong. I think they're they're going to shape the meta, so to speak, because um, the game designers also decided to make most of the harder fights weak to sword or like some sword pierce elements, right? Not that it's like statistically unlikely, but they probably intentionally also did that as well. Yeah, uh, they love yeah. their sword, and I respect it. Yeah, but keep in mind that. Um, in JP now, like sword is the like least o OP of the like viable damage types because one, it only has one six star in Ring of Bell, and secondly, there's no bullshit mechanics. Like there's no like sky sword breaking. There's no follow up attack. You know, there's yeah. no like excess BS. And like those things, they sound like gimmicks, but they're so powerful. They're extremely powerful. I think we've learned enough by now to basically just say with confidence that pre-breaks and such are not just gimmicks. It's a very real advantage. Yeah, it's a like huge... one action is a shit ton. It's a shit ton. It, yeah, it also allows you to dump all of your string. all of your A four res downs onto that unit and yes. put powerful attacking A fours onto your actual DPS. Yeah. Yep. One more action on a break turn is nuts. 
All right. So with all that said, let's jump into the list itself. Yeah. And we're just going to go alphabetically since that's the way the images were uploaded. God uh -huh. bless Bolt. Uh, that's where the majority of these images are ripped from. So a big ups to him for uh, creating all these images uh, yep. for his own tier list that I believe he posts on Reddit every time he does it. Yeah, you can tell where you made your own edits, right? Yeah, yeah, I added some of the ones that he hasn't added into his, his zip yet. All right, so we'll start off with uh, Agnia. Um, Starting off strong, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's definitely at least tier two and probably tier one. Um, we can drop her tier two first and then continue. You think so? As in continue the discussion, not just move on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. sure. No, put her in tier two, move on. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 10 minute video, brilliant. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're familiar with her kit, but let's do a quick highlight. Um, so basically, she had she can apply a special status effect, positive status effect, to um, whoever she buffs. And well, let's call the effect passion. Yeah, um, that's the best translation I can come up with at the moment. And she also has her latent power. Um, those of you who has played Octopath Traveler two will know what it is, but um. Essentially, it's another button you can press during the action choosing phase, and then that will allow you to modify some of her abilities. Um, it's quite similar to what she had in the original game. Um, I think all together now it was called, um, yeah. where single target abilities become um, front row, and front row or AOE front row abilities become whole party so eight members and not only that uh, actually her um so she also has debuffs and her hmm. single target debuffs become aoe as well yes so, yeah. you need four people with passion to activate one bonus effect of most of her abilities most of her abilities um have first of all its base effect second of all one bonus effect and thirdly, the second bonus effect, um, as you as you'd probably expect, the third bonus effect is usually the strongest. You achieve the you achieve the first bonus effect by having four party members with passion or seven party members with passion, uh, respectively. Just based on her passive alone, um, she sounds complicated however oh, wait we should did we talk about how allies get passion so they get passion yes um, when that may apply what, buff to them yeah yeah oh also the reason why i brought up the uh single target debuff that's becomes aoe is that um so her latent power has a four turn cooldown and its initial cooldown is two turns in theory like depending on you know how long you're how long your clear is you could also end up using it with her debuff because she's one of the only units that can aoe debuff with like any basically anything res down right and that can combine with um cygna's aoe debuff if you so yes choose. and pretty much that's like very unique right um mm -hmm. i don't think any other characters can do that really besides her and cygna just aoe anything debuff <laughs> yes i think she's She's basically the only unit, along with Signa, that you can reasonably use that with. I should also mention that, um, well, it sounds very complicated and all, but realistically, how you achieve those passion stacks on the whole party is relatively simple. You just need, um, let's, let's say, um, front row AoE. So that gives you four members with passion which means you unlock her EX ability uh, and the use condition is that you have four members with passion and yeah. then that EX ability um, is a full party targeting ability regardless of whether you have the latent power on or not. You'd immediately, you already, you can apply, you can have eight members with passion just like that by turn three. And then you can use your LP for 
AOE debuff and such and such. Um, yeah. Oh, I should also mention one of the main selling points, I suppose, um, in the EX ability, which I mentioned previously just now. Um, what the EX ability does is it allows the buff. So, you know, buffs are capped at 30%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It now makes this attack, elemental attack and crit go up to 50%. Mm -hmm. And the damage cap goes up by 30k. Very, just very usable in any comp, I think. You can yeah. Yeah. pretty much ignore the crit part, in my opinion. Issue that I just realized. Compared to the last time we did this uh, priority list, the character kits got a lot more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, an essay. It's like an essay. So, like, if, if we were to try to, like, let the audience understand um, specifically how a character I, I think that's good. Personally, I think that that's what people are looking for. I think like, that's good. but it's How you actually use well. the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you actually use them. But, like, before we get into the weeds, if we're going to do that, before we get into the weeds, I still think it's good to go over, like, a high-level overview of what makes the character mm. good. Okay. Yeah, great. You want to do that overview? Sure. So why you want to use Atnea mostly, it's because she can apply all Fist Rest Down or Ellie Rest Down, and that can be AoE. Um, and although by itself doesn't last that long, two turns, if you count uh, buff, debuff extensions and also Sigma, which we'll talk about later, it can be extended to a very usable um, sort of turn count. She also um, buffs the buff cap, active buff caps of this attack and Ellie attack and crit up to 50%. Um, as most of you already know, it is by default 30%. And she needed damage cap up um, 30k, but it again stacks with other sources of damage cap up 30k times however many hits um, your DPSs do. There's also generic fist damage up and Ellie damage up. So, you know, Richard does sword and spear damage up. It's basically that, but all fizz and all Ellie. So all in all, she can be easily fit in most teams. Okay. Not, so with her pairing with Signa and the way that she does for debuffs and what she offers to the buff side of the comps, uh, what makes her on the line between tier one and two for you guys, instead of just obviously being in one or the other? We have a, like a lot of different support units, and they all fit into different types types of comps. Like for example, um, if you're going to use EX Prim, right, you're probably not going to use Agnia. And the reason why I bring that up is because, so say for example, you use a Solon comp. If you use a Solon comp, you have to bring in EX Prim because you need her to recharge your ult, and then therefore you wouldn't be using Agnia, right? And then Another reason could be, for example, a lot of these newer units we'll get into later on have, for example, their own passives that are already give them up to 50% active and passive cap, actually. And they also have a self-buff skill that you can use to combine with any other buffer and to hit that cap as well. So then you don't need Agnia to bump up your, um, your cap with that. And then you also have um, characters that give other effects that are also AoE, easy easy to hit their rogue partner, etc. And as as we know, um, with support units, we don't really care about their damage. But one really good uh, utility point is if if their uh, AoEs can pierce, then they can end up, you know, hitting something in a lot of fights. Right? You don't have to pierce yes. two elements. Even p piercing one statistically makes that unit much more likely to be able to shred for you in a fight. I think the main point is, well, you said, well, we don't care about support units DPS. However, in reality, she's both a support unit and a DPS is yeah. what's happening here. Yeah, she is very good DPS for wind, obviously. And you mentioned her, well, being not very usable in Solon comps. We are seeing a steer towards comps where we don't really need so long yeah and i think like because... there's a couple of driving forces for that obviously uh there's yeah. characters that have self-potency either as a passive or a skill 
mm-hmm. then there's also the fact that we have this new mechanic of follow-up attacks. And with follow-up attacks, the more attackers you have, the more you get to take advantage of that, right? So it... I, I think I think the way to sort of align this is that um, we talked about the concept of uh, mixed comps uh, coming up, right? So like mixing, let's say, for, for example, sword and spear or whatever. And characters yeah. like Agnia benefit those kind of comps because of all res down, all damage up, etc. right? You don't have to worry about, you know, hitting. Well, I mean, I don't think sword and spear is a good example because they're easier to hit with buffs. Let's say, for example, like sword and dagger, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Um, SSMTs, like the, the banner she came with, she came with Temenos. Both those characters are, I would say like, I mean, I think Agni is a little bit better than Temenos, um, but uh, they're, they both have yeah. really good A4s. <laughs> I'll say that. Yes. So, like, you're not really only A4 chasing because they're still good characters. So, like, if you pull on them, they have relevant value for the content, you know, that mm. they, they come with. And then you're also building dupes towards, you know, possibly exchanging for their A4 down the line. And I will say, Agnes A4 is one of the best in the game. And it's also one of the hardest A4s to power creep, if ever, just because you can put it on anyone. That's such a huge yes. advantage. Yeah, wall in front row, full, full front row, thirty percent damage cap up. Yeah, like it, or not thirty percent, thirty k slots. Yeah, with three accessory slots, you're pretty much always going to do this. Because one disadvantage mm. we we often neglect talking about is that if you have to stack like more cap up onto a character, that is an opportunity cost. Like you're basically like most of the cap up items are are good. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Like some sometimes you want to use a different accessory because it serves a really good function or actually increases your DPS. But then you have to slap a cap up because you're ramming cap anyways. Well, with her, like yeah. she just expands those possibilities without affecting the slots of your DPS character. It's one of the accessories you want to exchange for at some point, yes. and then and you would need you a copy of her ex- for that. You need a, <laughs> you need the A zero. Because yeah. you can hold four stones from the exchange, and then you can't even use it because you don't have the character. So, and also from, I also think from the point of view of most players, I think most players can get quite a lot of use for her from when they mm. first pull her onwards, even till today. Like there's still comps that you can use her for. She's it's not like she's like you're just pulling her for her A4. So yeah, I think based on all that, you can probably put her in T1. Yeah, I want to put her in tier one because I like her too. So, we're just all right. Put her ah, in yes. <laughs> well, that was a good opener for. I mean, we covered a lot of Agnia, but we also covered a lot of like just the way the meta shifted. Um, we're already making James' job way harder than. I mean, it's it's fine. <laughs> and I, th- I think that conversation was good to have. I would have cut it off if I thought it was just like rambling. Okay, that's fair. Well, um, it's a good thing the next one is very easy to discuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we already discussed her before, so. That's good. We can just go like this and we're done. Right? I mean, just, just to cover it, in the last one, <laughs> we did put her tier one. She's a great support. She's coming out really soon. We'll get lots of use out of her. And really nothing has changed about that. Yeah. yeah so I think, I think, because, well, obviously, you're just using her for the BP. That, that's the yeah. real reality of it. The rest of her kit really doesn't matter. Um, I will say that we have been seeing a few more AOE BP regen buffs mm-hmm. in the form of Kilns, Ogan. I uh, don't remember if there's any more, but yeah. I mean, it's not even just that. It's just that, um, so uh, even Signa has a single target BP regen, and you don't yeah. need BP regen on everyone. Most of the time, no, you only need it on one or two characters. The other thing is that some characters also come with their own BP regen after they get buffs. Um, either TP or EX buffs, uh, they get that. And you know, when, once they already have that, uh, if if their nuke is only three BP, they don't have like some sort of special BP requirement. That that's all they need. So the ease of use, because for the AOE BP buffs we have currently, it is still um, at best at front row only. So yeah. there's a, a, th- th- those are a, the two factors. But There's some um, speed tinkering to think of. Oh, um, those BP buffs are not mutually exclusive with our own AEX. So if you yeah. have some very, very extreme BP needs, then yeah. she's still going to be in there. 
Yeah, there there are some pretty BP hungry characters. Ease of use as well. I think she can still sit in tier one pretty comfortably. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think we can move on from this one. It's not much of a discussion to be honest. All right, yeah. Casty. I can't I can't believe we're already moving to Casty. Yeah, just T one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she's pretty ridiculous, but um, short overview. She she gives X follow up. Um, so follow up is a new mechanic. When anyone attacks with axe da- with axe damage, like actual axe damage, not XP uses axe, that character launches a an AOE follow up axe attack. It's the potency. Let's it's two hundred. <laughs> yeah, two hundred. Two hundred yeah, AOE. AOE. <laughs> yeah, so um, you might think two hundred doesn't sound like for much. But it's basically no, it's a lot. An unboosted nuke. However, um, when you consider the buffs, and pa- basically most of your DPS abilities now are like six hits at like around 100 potency or something. So it's just going to hit cap, and it's going to be however many DPS characters you use. Yeah, you have, you have to think about it. It's, like the, it's the same thing as using like a uncharged nuke, but that also means that um, the po- the potency is pretty much greater than any sort of multi hits the uh, single hit potency, right? Like any 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 single hits potency of a multi hit move. Sorry, and in that sense, mm-hmm. that move is like always going to hit cap over break. It's very strong. Also, just to clarify, does she do a follow up per like action? So if you do like a four hit, is she going to hit four times? Uh, oh, so if you if you have characters that have like the uh, divine feet kind of thing, it's not going to apply twice. It just applies at the end of their second action. Okay. Yes. And also, there's no pre-fire axe, but um, I've tested uh, because there are other follow-up mechanics. Um, but if you attack with a pre-fire move, it doesn't trigger the follow-up. So it does yep. seem like you can only trigger the follow-up from Casty four times per turn maximum yeah it, it, yeah but it still that's 800 it doesn't potency, trigger so. does she follow fire? up herself yes yeah. she does yeah. oh, hell yeah um and so i mean you can pretty much just call it like any so it doesn't count uh pre uh, pre-fires it doesn't count counters counters don't get follow-up attacks either well which mm, no. i mentioned that so it's just i mean to think about it more simply to remember it's just any active skill or alt, right? I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, uh, active action casted attack, that yes. turn. <laughs> okay, yeah, basic attack. Sure, any active action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, she also has the Richard passive for acts, basically, and a nice bonus of crit. So um, when at full HP, 15% this attack, crit, and axe damage. Yeah. But that, that crit is totally useless, because every time you use her in a comp, you get guaranteed crit. Yes. <laughs> oh, which is um, which is actually explain. the main selling point of her kit that we have uh, not talked about we yet. Haven't even talked about yet. Yeah. Yeah. So um, she has this buff. So yeah. this buff boost gives fifteen percent fizz attack, percent active axe damage, thirty percent potency up, so um twenty k damage cap up, and two turn. Oh, sorry. Um, the above effects are five turns, and also two turns of guaranteed crit, which is extendable to three if you have the appropriate equipment. Yeah, so I think the main selling point is the fact that you have to use it at boost max, but when you use it at, uh, at max boost, you can get guaranteed crit for three turns. So you can you end up using this move the turn before break, right? And the condition for using her EX skill it's just that you have six or more buff or debuff icons on Casty, which is really easy to achieve. In fact, you can achieve it on turn one, even as if she's in front row, you can do it. Yeah. It's basically yeah. that. And then if she's yeah. in the back row, there are some occasions where you can't do it, but that very easily to get past. Yeah, and you can use it twice, and it will extend. So even if you don't have an extender, you can just use it twice in a row, and then. You can still get three turns of crit like that. Wow, she just really brings everything to the table on top of being an attacker. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, we forgot to mention she has a 15% axe down on a four hit uh, random target priority axe attack. Yep. Yeah, in true Richard um, fashion. Yes. <laughs> except she has priority for some oh, reason. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> and the axe down is not a. It's not random <laughs> chance. It just. Works. Oh, it just lands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they learned their lesson. Yes, uh, although the the duration is one turn. If it's single target, it lands four times, guaranteed. Yeah. So it's going to be four turns. If you have the buff extension, it's going to be eight turns. Yep. Um. So yeah, there's less RNG in that. Well, there's no RNG in that if yeah. it's a single target situation. Yeah. And you know that four hit is actually a five hit because she always follows up herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she also has out fist damage up and out axe damage up. So truly, the well out and and that out buff is also full party. So you don't even have to use your brain when. <laughs> just, yep. um, she, she's like the, the most buff. brain brain dead character. <laughs> it's, so, it's so ridiculous. Yes. It's like even Agnia, I think Agnia's kit, you actually have to use significantly more brain cells. Yes, you do have to use your brain when playing Acne. Yeah. Um, Cassidy, you just pop it in any of this comp, or in some cases, some Ellie comps, you can still justify it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so easy tier one, I think. There's not much debate, to be honest. Yeah, so like, just to summarize big picture, she's like a richer type of general for Axe, except better in pretty much every single way. Her debuff is guaranteed. Her alt covers more because it, it just gives you fizz attack as well. She has like an insane buff that is useful for every single comp. She has follow up attacks for axe comp specifically. Uh, she basically has no drawbacks on any of these things as well because even her ex condition is free. Uh, I don't even know what any downsides are. There are none. <laughs> She's just good. We're shilling Richard quite hard on the first tier list. Yep. Yeah, so I think anyone who did follow the advice and pulled Richard would know how good Richard is. And yeah. yes, Casty's yeah. just... Just Richard, Richard on crack. Plus, plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, everybody's favorite waifu that they've been seeing in the seed story. Up next. Yep. Yep. Oh, um, yes. I think this one's Trainer. also a little bit debatable. Um, I think the reason why is that so when when she releases, she is it's not like she creates the magic meta. She is her own meta, right? She, she's like her own. Oh, my 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 magic is relevant, not magic is relevant because even if you have a character like Neha, it doesn't just make these magic comps for other elements good. It's mostly that she is very self sufficient and very powerful for the content that she releases for. And there's no one that can serve her functionality because she is an AoE DPS that hits uh, light and dark really well for a while, right? So when we discuss her shelf life, it's gonna be kind of iffy because we have no idea what the EN release schedule is gonna be. The downside is that we already know a character practically, basically power creeps her because um, he power creeps her for dark yeah. and then for light, uh, single target definitely just super omega power creep by Kaine. So sort of an AoE light niche, right? But we uh, also have other, we also have other characters that cover that. We have Sasanto. There's funny right? Odette in Yeah, in there's JT. funny Odette. Uh there's funny Odette. She's really strong. She she has eight hit AoE, uh wind pierce light, and then we also have Sazantos that a lot of people are also pulling for. Oh. I think in, in global, the thing that I've heard the most is most people skipped Leon to go deep onto her banner to spook Leon, basically. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a bit of a mistake. The reason why is this. Like, if you're an active player, pulling on Leon, um, as as he came out, gave him a very long shelf life. So even even the Leon as a character, like, we put him in Tier 2 before. As I, as I play content, I slowly realize that for whatever reason... A lot of the EX free fights are all just weak to spear. And in fact, like spear ends up being like the best weakness, the best damage type to bring because it's like your strongest for those. And so like 
that added on to the fact that we got soul on way earlier like four months earlier that really actually uh retrospectively probably <laughs> made me want to put leon in tier one but there's no way for us to have yeah, known that we yeah. would have gotten soul on four months earlier and the then fact we that we got, got him richard buffs earlier. that we did or i'm uh, sorry the roland buffs that we did yeah so like roland buffs made spear yeah. stronger getting soul on four months earlier made spear stronger right if we're just solely looking at the jp meta i think I think Leon being tier two is still reasonable because Spear is not that strong. But now it's just like a Spear is our best option for so much content. And his shelf life lasts all the way until, you know, basically Celestia. It's still hard to place her specifically because we don't know the EN timeline or what it's going to be. But if it's similar to what JP is, I think that like gives her a little boost, right? In terms of she releases, she can do a lot of good stuff for quite a while and then, then she falls off. I think that's, like a, that's a solid explanation for a tier two, in my opinion. I do admit that she brings a lot to the table for a lot of the fights, a lot of the AOE fights. Yep. But then, like right now, I've not used her for quite a while now. So yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if like that makes me biased against her. Yeah. So I'm like more, I'm more thinking maybe, to be honest. You're thinking maybe I'm thinking tier two. The, mm. the, the main reason why is because like she has immediate use and she's really good at it. So like so we have what what was it? Tikulin refight, Glossom refight. Um, what else is Dark Week? Also, just in general, like tier two isn't even saying a unit's bad because mm. basically everything we put on tier two in the last video, I ended up pulling for and really got, I got tons of use out of basically. Like, as, as yeah. much use as a tier one, basically. It's just <laughs> that, like, if you had to pick between, you know, this unit or the other, then it, like, it just leans one way. But they're, like, yeah. they're still great units. I think, like, the argument for maybe also makes sense because she's on that stupid ass sacred banner. Sacred yeah, Blaze the banner. sacred blaze banners are yeah, actually ouch. the bane of my existence. I forgot about that. And I wish, I wish we got Taiwan sacred blaze banner. You know, shout out to Taiwan because they have 150 pity. Uh, hint, hint. Maybe we should get that too. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, we should also get new <laughs> units every single week <laughs> until we're shot up to JP. <laughs> My main complaint is that I wish we would move fast like Taiwan because they started a couple months after us and now they're a couple months ahead of us. <laughs> uh, so I wish we were a little bit faster like them. Um, but yeah, I, I think for them, the train is. The trainer has that 150 pity, but then she also gets power creep faster. So True. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even remember that she was on a sacred blaze banner, which in a pool priority list means quite a bit because that banner sucks. Yeah, it really. And sucks. for those who are like, you know, thinking of um, just sparking Leon, you you now have to consider. Um, with Ian Rowland, especially if you have him, yeah. whether Leon actually fits in the spear comp with the upcoming units in mind. Yeah, I will say also it's um, whether or not you pull her, you will know like a, a little bit more uh, details because once they announce her in a tavern talk, you'll know how close she is to our next Annie. Right, because we're the next Annie's coming up for Ian in about three and a half months, uh, and for Annie's we're gonna have the selector banner again, which is an option for people um, who don't want to play the RNG game with the sacred place banner. Because I think uh, expected value wise, it's not that different. But if you just want one copy, it's a lot more stable. If you're a paid player, to just use that banner, and on that banner you can also spark. Uh, empty units that you may not have or dupes for empty units and um for the most part i would say that empty units have on average more useful uh dupes more useful dupe value than prior sacred banner characters you know sacred what banners. actually i forgot one thing that might put her back in tier two uh-huh um you know how we were mentioning how uh sorry um actually <laughs> Let's just start with her. You know how Sacred Blaze characters have a character-specific accessory? Yeah, that's a pretty good accessory. <laughs> um, she has the one and only accessory that allows her 
buff received to be extended by one turn. Yeah. It, it so, saves you. It saves you a uh, character slot actually. If you use that, you don't need a Mabel or a Lucetta back. Yes. So yeah. that, and if you're running, if you want to run duo DPS for whatever reason, don't mm -hmm. know, but you might want to. Uh, maybe there's a follow up or whatever that benefits that. Um, you can use your well because you're not. You're probably not using Lucetta. You're probably using Mabel in an early comp. Then that accessory suddenly becomes quite valuable, I think. Yeah, because you can run it and with your DPS. Trait. She's the only one that can use it. Yeah. And then you can put uh, Isla in conjunction with her. Well, Isla's out benefits um, any Ellie caster quite a bit, just based on Isla being the only. Wait, well, actually, with Neha, but one yeah. of the two characters that can buff. Ellie damage. Yeah, but like once we have Isla, category. once we have Isla, we're already close to power creeping her out, right? Like we're like mm. a couple months away. And I think the other thing is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her kit, um, but just to maximize her damage, she often has to spend some turns. Yes, yeah, yeah. hitting the other element. Yeah. yeah. So like. So one thing that really actually made her a lot stronger is when she got her TP stuff, right? Mm. Um, was it her TP passive uh, that gives yes. her two turns to start? But those two turns turns to start like help a lot because you still need to. I mean, for for like even for a one break, you still need to use some of the other moves to stack that, so that you have enough over break, right? Yeah, I think the overview. The overview is that she's an AOE DPS monster that can guarantee her self crit without any other support, uh, and she can. She also has relevant uh, buffs and debuffs. I mean, sorry, mostly debuffs. Re relevant debuffs that she needs yeah. to support her own damage in light and dark comps, and her buffs are, you know, for herself, but uh, they're mostly related to gaining guaranteed critical or gaining a recast, right? Yeah, recast. It's. I, I think. I think it's valid to put her in tier two, right? Um, mostly because she's actually just really good at those fights, and there's really no replacement for her for quite a while for those fights. Uh, All right. Alrico, the other sister um, sharing a banner, so simply with her Arana EX. Yeah. So, so we put her in tier one last time, and we also talked about how we'd probably come back next time or this time. <laughs> and reevaluate these sword units or whether or not it's um, it's a good idea to pull for all three, right? All three of Elrica, Odio O, and Sazantos. At the moment, well, she's missing 20 levels worth of stats, first of all. Well. I think the main thing that we can, we can talk about is that the fact that Elrica is pro probably the strongest single target DPS among uh, the, the trio, the three musketeers of EOS, right? Her drawback is that, like, as we get six stars, her team utility is actually less than that of both Odio O and Sazantos in terms of if you're going to pair them up with a character like uh, Ring a Bell, right? Which is the only six star swordsman we're going to have, or that JP has had for a very long time. The reason why is because okay, Sazantos. Hikari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hikari is not really a warrior. We'll talk about that too, I guess. He's the arms master. Yeah. So, because because Santos, his alt is extremely valuable, right? Yes. There are a lot of ways to use it to get insane benefit that, like, literally, you there's nothing else you can possibly do to replace regenerating yes. on the same turn. Um, and Odio O is, has that cracked out buff that we harped on so much last time. It's because... still cracked. Yeah, and so when you squeeze in a new character, whether that be Ring a Bell or like a character after Ring a Bell, right? Mm. Like it's, it's much harder to fit a character like Elrica in, especially since like she she still has the same issue with like she ha she has no multi hit single target. It's like a random target, and then she has no AOE yet, right? So she she has those two problems, which both can be patched up by six stars. And the reason why like we bring this up is because like. None of these uh, three swordsmen actually have their six star versions yet, so all of this could change. And, and, and of course, Elrica and uh, Odio don't even have their TP skill yet, so they have like multiple ways to get uh, get buffed, and uh, these things can change. But yeah. um, 
if we're going to change yeah if we're going to guess from the point of view of the developers i i feel like it's more likely that they'll get uh reasonable buffs that make them make you satisfied but then at the same time they're still going to uh, release a new warrior that's gonna be much more appealing <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so th- that's sort of can put her in tier two to be honest it's definitely not tier one in my yeah mind. i i feel like if you're comparing her with a character like casty it's just like no there's no comparison it yeah we can start at tier two and then yeah maybe think if yeah it should be even lower that's and even a character even a character like alon yet alon ex like she just because of her bp regen thing that there's like a the fact that it is a channeling effect it's one action and it can be stacked with other sources of bp regen keeps her there right yes like especially the fact that you can even stack it like being able to stack is actually really nice because we're, we're you know we're having this meta of like a lot more characters having like be, being able to use more than three bp yeah or mm-hmm. wanting to use their bp before break anyways right so having two bp regen can be even more valuable in, in both um, yeah besides using you know five bp in one go there's yeah. also uh well three turns where you want to max but boost in a row which yep. we'll talk about later yeah, I'll talk about that uh, too. <laughs> yeah we can explain that later because whatever could that mean it's a very foreign <laughs> concept <laughs> that's why around a ex still sits on t1 yeah. and erica is just yeah i feel like these two characters, like but depending on how you rate the characters going forward, they're either tier two or maybe. They're definitely not tier two or tier one. They're like between these two now, right? Yeah. Cause like we're talking about a pull priority tier list, and depending on who we're talking about, right? I think I think like our criteria for spenders is that tier two, like as a spender, you can pretty much pick and choose get, who you want. Yeah. Yeah, pick and choose who you want and get like most of both of tier one and two, right? Yeah. Just by, well, if we're assuming the same banner format, just by them sharing, the sisters sharing the yeah. uh, same pity pool, mm-hmm. you can still put her in tier two. Yeah. This is another point that I really wanted to bring up. It's that most people do not have the resources to A1 every single DPS character. And in a sense, it's actually better to have, let's say, one or two out of the three at A1 than to have all three at A0, right? Because, like, especially since we're sort of in the meta where, like, Solon is extremely strong, you don't want to be Soloning, like, an A0 character when you can have A1. That's sort of... Depending on who your DPS is and how long you're willing to wait, Yeah. an A1 can be cheaper than two A0. And the, the reason why is because you, you have that pity. Well, I mean... Even if you don't account for pity, but accounting for pity even more so, right? Because yeah. pity is like a free free copy, and you're very likely to be much much more close, uh, much closer to uh, your pity after you hit like in a dual banner both characters once, right? Mm. So like you can pick up the A one for your DPS, for example. So like we already talked about ODO, right? Like ODO, you can't you can't even get his dupes anywhere else except yeah, for his besides the club. Yeah, and also he's just the most must pull right so like if you're someone who has to decide between these three three characters and you are also have a must pull you may as well just get his a1 i think you have one character and you have him then you should a1 him <laughs> and then yeah. so on him <laughs> and you're good you can hardly discuss um where erica belongs on this list without simultaneously discussing where Odio and Sasantos belong on this list. Why don't we just do all oh, we three can. right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. like, if we're thinking from a pool priority perspective, it yeah. doesn't make sense to exclude the other two. Yeah. Not only that, okay. Like, so Casty is really strong. We just talked about how the fact that Casty can fit into almost every comp, including Ellie comps. Mm-hmm. That's still not free, though. Like, we have, we have eight character slots in a roster, in a fight roster, but. Eight sounds like a lot. It's really not a lot. Like we 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 want to fit in so many different things. And Odio Odio O makes it so that for in a sword comp, actually you don't have to bring Cassie. Like she's only giving you like twenty k cap up in that sense. Where whereas Odio gives you all damage up, right? So well, Cassie also gives potency up. She does, but if you're doing a Solon or you know then yeah, if you're doing a Solon, then it matters less. Yeah. So like, 
sword comp is one of the only comps that you may not bring her like you're likely to not bring her because you're bringing odio -O. and in that mm. sense that just that showcases, how, that showcases how strong he is actually yeah the fact that he's still you would still bring him yeah you can pop him in t1 easy i don't think that's yeah i don't think it's very debatable especially since mm. like it's all damage 20 percent all damage up at the same time and yeah, that the BP and, comes in quite handy. The BP comes in very handy. That <laughs> one BP right before break is so nice. Especially since you can, like, if you're starting a 5 BP, you use one BP and he's back to full as well. Everyone else is benefiting because they're doing all their shenanigans pre break. So, yeah, this is uh, okay. So, if we're putting him here uh, for sure, um, and we have Cezantos here too. So, I think Cezantos. Like like we talked about, I think Cezantos should at least be in the same tier as Elrica. But um I would put him, you know, if we're ordering within tiers, he's above Elrica for me. Yeah, I agree. Um we talked about this last time, but like it's just because his alt is so good and it got even better. So basically that means that you can do five BP alt five BP. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So now I'm a I'm a certified Cezantos U10 enjoyer. Yeah, and then and then and you I've can, done it before A1. Yeah, and then you can U10, and then you can alt again with U10. That's so, yes, like four and turns, four. And, then, and then you have five PP again. <laughs> and it's not only Cezantos that has that; it's also whoever else is in the front row of him when he casts that alt. Yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous. If you think about all the different effects, the re extremely powerful effects. Where their main drawback is that you have to expend all your BP on in one turn. That's that goes for a lot of different characters uh, in the future yeah. and also going forward. A lot of you know five BP effects and stuff. And he just like, okay, you want to do that, bro? Let me help you out. You have your BP back, and let's let's do some you know, let's let's get in on some action, right? Also, um, I, I think last time we didn't really go deeper into his kit, but he also has some pretty nice uh, utility skills as well. For example, he has an AoE defense, uh, magic defense down with boost, right? Which you can do. Um, he has a grant magic block encounter for one magic attack. That's That could be pretty useful sometimes, right? That also yes. grants 15% uh, defense and magic defense up. Uh, that's a pretty powerful utility skill. He has very good uh, shred because he pierces two weaknesses instead of just one. And he mm -hmm. has a really good single target. <laughs> That hits up to eight times, right? So, yeah, I think. So with all of that, late tier two. I don't know if tier one. I think I like well, this is a tier, pull priority tier list, right? And he comes with yeah. Signa. Like it's really hard oh, to justify okay, not yeah. pulling him because like it comes with Signa, and Signa wants dupes like really badly. But at yeah, the same both time, both of them want dupes. Quite yeah, both badly. of them want dupes. Yeah. Yes. Um. While we're at it, we can just pop Signa up there. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, just start chaining him. Yeah, yeah, and not not only that, we we talked at length about her last time, so I don't think we need to talk too much about her this time. She just debuffs everything for every party all the time, and the, and their AO, and she has AOE debuffs, and her alt is AOE too. <laughs> it hits everything. It is all elements, all weaknesses, whatever. Yeah, and you want the dupe yeah, for her shit. for her ultimate. Are you? Yeah. I guess you're also kind of a ten or a four chasing on her as well. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, she's yeah. Um, not only that, she's she's a really good shield shaver too, because she mm. pierces as well, and she has a shit ton of hits. Yeah, she, she's she like wants... pseudo balanced by the conditions on her skill, but not. It's not. Not really, really because yeah, it's that's... not even difficult to achieve the conditions. All her conditions are, I think, based on debuff icons, which are pretty easy to achieve, even for free to play, because we have so many like free, whatever, like just slap on, get it, get some sort of passive res down, blah blah blah. Yeah, all the yeah. A4 accessory or four star yeah. A4 accessories we got. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like even to this day in JP, she's like one of the most like uniquely you know like powerful units that you can slap into so many different kind of rosters i can't remember the last time i took her out of a party so yeah oh <laughs> okay <laughs> that's a good way to put that, it that's... there's no yeah. way to replace her alt debuff at all basically yeah it's very very difficult 
Yeah, at so, U10, AoE, 20% attack, defense, magic, magic defense down for three turns, extendable okay. by accessory. Yes, yes that's rather disgusting, so... Yeah. Like, just, in fact, like, it, yeah, in fact, like, she's probably, like, more useful than Casty, even. She should be just, like, number one. Like, Casty would be, like, these these two would be top two for now, right now. Yeah, you can put them like that. Mm. Are we ranking them now? I mean, it doesn't have to be like solid. Al but just... Also, also, it's the fact that yeah. Signa came way before Cassie, so she's already had a much longer shelf life, whereas we don't know Cassie's shelf life, right? So, yeah, fair. So, yeah, yeah you can put her just up there. Yeah. 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 I mean, in that sense, if we're going to rank these, it'd be more like that or something like this, right? I think this is fair. Something it does like this. feel like if you are going to pull one unit out of this bunch, it's Signa. Yeah. If you skip Signa, you're going to be miserable. Just to put yeah. some contrast on this list, uh, let's talk about Lemaire next, our next upcoming global <laughs> unit. <laughs> so that way this doesn't look now. so weighted. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. We're just uh, going random. Yeah, well, okay. just in case I do have to split this, talking about the newest character in the first part is... Damn. Yeah. All right, uh, easy yeah. skip. <laughs> cool. Finally. <laughs> I mean, she tries to be a lot of things, but then... It doesn't really work. Yeah, trying to be too many things. Yeah. I think if you... So, I think the main argument for her wouldn't be about pulling her at all. Just, like, as a character, right? This versus the tier list for how good the character is. She wouldn't be, like, bottom tier for newer accounts because, you know, you can, she can fill in all of the holes. But mm. for, like, a vet account, um, her value in any comp is very niche. You'd have to have, like, a very specific reason to bring her. She's also coming out on a paid banner. Which is yeah, it's even worse. <laughs> like full of priority list, like it's just like the most easy decision ever to put her here. Yeah, she hits I'm really all the elements. Surprised. I thought she was going to be one of the characters that was just so obviously targetable for a buff to make her like uh -huh. pullable on release, uh -huh. and they just didn't. I will say one thing though is that um, once Oswald comes out for like specific fights where the enemy is weak to two out of three or three out of three of fire ice and lightning uh the fact that she can do six hit elemental and then same thing with her alt is actually pretty nice because of the follow-up hits it's actually pretty strong but that's an extremely it's niche niche. case yeah <laughs> case and then it's also dependent on while well, you're pulling oswald yeah it's more it's more of oswald than her but like you know yes she, Other she's characters can do the same thing besides Cyrus with his alts, right? Yeah. Cyrus, yeah. But then even then, she's not that strong. She's not. But you know, so, her yeah, alt also, also gives you a buff at the same time as hitting a bunch of stuff with follow-ups. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can definitely just my her for that. But yeah. None of this. Ultimately, <laughs> mean yeah. you can justify pulling for her. It's... Also, her A4 sucks, so you know, there's not much to say there. And uh... then, in terms of recency as well, we already talked about ODOO, so do you want to go through the rest of the Live Alive collab? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, All right, sure. If you hit ODOO early and you're pretty far away from Pity, you still want another ODOO copy. And then, after you get another ODOO copy, if you're very close to Pity, I guess you can grab one just for completion's sake, but you're not going to be using him too often, I think. I mean, if it's completion's sake, but, that's a skip. Yeah. 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 And I think he belongs there, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I don't really know why you would bring him <laughs> most of the time. There's literally no reason to, unless it's clear. Just for the power, voice lines. But, but like, what? I will say he's a lot more usable in overworld fights like because in ex refights you can't like do the stupid low hp gimmick if you do a low hp gimmick he's more usable like immediately but you know what i mean like you just start the battle at low hp but even with the low hp gimmicks it, it's just so much effort to pull off something that's not even unique <laughs> like why would you bother i know <laughs> so like uh... Yeah, unless they do something drastic to this kid, I, 
yeah, at the moment, it's just yeah. yeah live alive I is get... another thing I expected that they would target with buffs, but we yeah, haven't heard anything so. from Taiwan yet. So yeah, well, so we can't. We should soon. Really I guess we'll much. see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, even if you already have an ODO copy, you'd rather get ODOs A1 rather than ODOs. So yeah, if it was that pity, and then have ODO, I don't know, A one zero. I'd still go for another ODO copy rather than ODO S. <laughs> really? You'd go for his A2? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's just so not usable. Yeah, also, I mean, I would definitely go for ODO's A3 if I had the option over him, even. Yeah, if, and if you have your itchy hand during the rerun, then you're closer to that. Yeah, that's true. What? Yeah, like, with Col here's the thing that I realized about... Uh, Square Enix's balancing strategy. Collab units, when they get their significant buffs, whether that's from TP or from a six star, are much more likely to get buffs that make them on par with new units than old MT units. Because specifically because collab units are collab units, right? Yeah, you can't just spook them randomly. Yeah, you can't spook them randomly. They're rare, they're exclusive. Uh they really, really want you to pull on them. That's like one of their biggest cash cows. So uh, we already saw that effect with Frederica's JP buffs, right? She's all of a sudden she's like the best fire DPS. Ten and... hits, pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> she's... <laughs> she's pretty poor. I have a Maybe. dream that when they rerun Live Alive, we will get Cube, and he will be the most OP unit in the game, <laughs> just like <laughs> he is in that game. Uh... You can pray. And Odo will uh, will be a shadow of his former self in comparison. <laughs> All right, That's I left cool Orsted in there just to uh -huh. talk. We get a free copy of him, the same way we yeah, get nine yeah. S, right? But I left mm -hmm. him in there to talk about dupes or you know pulling on the banner in general for that part of the club. Right. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you also left this guy in here too, and his dupes are free. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's an arena unit. <laughs> yeah, that one got by me. My bad. Yeah. But eh, it doesn't matter. But it's okay. His his dupes aren't that good. His A four is not that good. So we can. I mean, we can put them in skip because. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pull for them. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to pull more for them. <laughs> uh. Yep. And then um, Sturbro. Base four. Uh, A four chasing only. Yeah. Because it doesn't do much, but. I will, I will yes. say though, like unless you're like a Giga sp Speed Clearer, uh -huh. um, not even Giga sp Speed Clearer, because I'm a Giga Speed Clearer, but I'm not a Giga Whale. I, I'm not going to chase for his A4 because cool. like, like just the thing about it, Ka Kaine's thing already gives it to you. And also, just to bring it all... up, his A4 is start of battle, taunt all enemies for three turns, and yeah. fill special gauge up to 100. percent So it's okay. Yeah, so so Sarah we Noah already plus have, <laughs> yeah, room. we already have August A four plus August. Sorry, yeah, we already have August A four. We're gonna get Strabo A four, then also Temenos A four, and then Kine A four. So yeah. out of all of these, Temenos How is many do you really need? Yeah, like do you really need four start battle A four? I doubt no. that. I, I think all, like maybe all my whole front row will be casting <laughs> specials turn one. Okay, you can, you can already do that with three. <laughs> <laughs> you can just use a pet for the other one. So it's like uh I'd say you can so from my point of view in speed clears, oftentimes you like one will one will almost always benefit you in speed clear, two will often benefit you as well. Three, it's already getting kind of like a stretch, like it's pretty niche. And then four, you'd basically never need four. So if you're A4 chasing, you're not a Giga Whale, I would not chase this because it's limited. Just pull yeah, on. It's limited. It's paired yeah. with another bad character to get dupes on. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. it's not the greatest of the four that all do the same thing. Uh, yeah. I think it's yeah, nice that I think it's nice that it also taunts because it's like combining mm -hmm. two accessories into one, and that can have good value, right? That can have good value, yes. Yeah, because like you cast your alt and then you have a dodge accessory at the same time on that same unit and you know you're saving an accessory slot but is that really worth how much how much rubies do you really want to spend on doing that yeah, yeah. exactly 
So Honestly, I, say... I don't I don't even think that we should put him in A4 chasing. I don't think that should even be a recommendation. <laughs> a I mean, I, I feel like I feel like this tier is just for whales, right? Like so I mean maybe just I leave think... him here. Yeah, but then I mean Probably I true. suppose it should be fairly obvious that if you're not a whale, you shouldn't even touch this shit. Especially considering Oh yeah, you, you can't know, even he's... shard lab units, so he's it's not like you in the long so... run. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, just just to let everyone know, I'm not gonna chase for this. I know a lot of people ask me what A4s I'm going for. Uh, I'm not going for this one. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I'm not even um, gonna touch this banner unless they giga buff these units, which you know is a on the list so far. The only A4 you're chasing on here right now is Signa, right? Uh, no. Um, I think he's chasing a bit more than that. So I'm not going to chase on release Agnias unless I get really lucky. I might. Because Agnia comes with Temenos and both their A4s are good. Like Temenos, like we said, has 50k cap up and also alt uh alt to start. So like I might, but I'm probably not going to. I'm probably just gonna, you know, do one round and then wait six months. But in ter- in terms of A4 on release, I think Cygna's one I probably want to get. Uh, we'll see. I, I think it's pretty likely. Yeah, and then oh, really, yeah, I think it's pretty likely because I'm getting sick and tired of these. So like, I I'm not well enough to have a three on most of my DPS characters. In fact, most of them are a zero bulk, unless they're yeah. like a, a thief. And I'm getting sick and tired of these ex refights tr- trying to force me to like one tapping. <laughs> yeah, just one tapping me over and over again, and like. I can I can deal with that by setting up like a more buffs and debuffs. When when I do that, my turn count gets extended by one. So I don't like that. Mm. <laughs> so truly right. first world problems. Uh yeah. yeah. Oh, no, How can I upload this video when it's a seven clear one. instead of a six? Yeah, exactly. It's like I can't. This is this is not uploadable for me. It's it's not up to standard. So. <laughs> mm. I think there's a good chance I might get it soon, but we'll see. I think the the ones that if we're talking about A4s, the, the ones that I'm definitely going to get on release is just going to be uh, Hikari's A4 and then near A4. I'm definitely going to get on release. I think mm-hmm. everything else is I don't know, maybe right, but I think on the tier mm-hmm. two, the tier two of maybes would be Signa, Temenos. I mean, not Tem- I wouldn't prioritize Temenos, but you get my point. The same banner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Agnia, uh, Agnia Temenos, Signa, Suzantos. Those are like my like tier right below that. Like, I think that's yeah. reasonable. I don't think there's any other A fours that are quite on that tier, off the top of my head, at least. It feels kind of weird to like talk about near collab and then start talking about like you know kilns and stuff. It's kind of weird. Sure, I guess. And like Ochet. Let's let's, let's leave these for last because I think. Where is it? Uh, Kaine. Kaine. It's in the middle. Ah. I misspell her name so many times I don't even know how to spell it anymore. <laughs> Technically, that's even spelled wrong, but it's like an accented Yeah, yeah. Vowel. Accent, accented E, I think, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. I think, okay, so should we talk about Glorious Kit before we try to raid her? I mean, overview. I overview, guess. yeah. Yeah. Gloria is more of like a support, a defensive support character, I would say. She has some form of overall support with her TP skill, I think. Her main utility is keeping your team alive, I think. So um, just passively, she increases survivability of your team by quite a lot by having, um, when she casts an attack ability, she gives a prone shield of sorts. Um, don't know if people are actually familiar with prone shields, but basically a one-time damage cut of 30%, mm-hmm. and you can't stack that, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Her kit is very, very uh, steered towards survivability, which I find kind of difficult to appreciate because yeah. <laughs> survivability is just not much of a problem at this point. The, the best game, defense but... in this game is a good offense. Yeah, literally how the easiest way to 
play the game. It's not just for flexing low turn counts. It's like if you can one break something, that is usually the easier solution. Which me and most things are in the one break sort of threshold at this point. So yeah, um, I'm finding it very difficult to appreciate survivability based kits. Uh, we should mention uh, that you talked about how the devs did announce that they're going to add more difficult content in the near future in JP. So yes, half things, any things might change. Not I sure get... how it. The devs do recognize that, like, even low budget accounts right now are really strong relative to the content. Mm. I think Gloria would, if there's ever content that requires sustain in, you know, SP, uh, yeah, and survivability, I think she would excel just yeah. based on her unique. Definitely. Um, Hey, HP, um, what, what was it? Um, so usage, uh, this is a 300 SP scale, mm -hmm. but after usage, three turns later, there's a 50% SP regen, 100% HP regen, and free BP recovery. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually HP. quite significant. It's 50% of your SP restored and three yeah. BP restored. And it's also the number of activations is actually based on how many BP you use. So zero bp would be one activation three bp would be four activations so you know if your clear is like whatever 12 turns and you line it up correctly theoretically all of these bp restores can be useful and i would say the bp restore is a very very something you can use without planning but if you can plan it it's gonna be excellent yeah especially three bp <laughs> it's not yeah. one it's three Yep. But it is, again, you know, is there such a demand for BP in your clear? Yeah. But the thing is, she's, she's just such a monstrous defensive unit. Her EX skill gives you one time front roll, full 100% damage reduction. Right? Yeah, you're and... still going to take one damage, but who cares? Yeah, and <laughs> you get two uses of it after turn six, so... Like everything about her kit streams, I'm going to play defensively because this fight is really hard. Um, and she's going to be like more and more useful the longer your clear is, I think. You know, yes, and clear. I have seen some conversations uh, revolving around glory and terminals um, from the uh, 200 turn enjoyers. Uh, <laughs> That's a way to put that it. <laughs> they find that um, their parties are basically unkillable. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have, if that's your preferred, you know, play style, because like, um, have in some other JRPGs, I do like doing the turtle strategy. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can go for that. Um, she's going to be pretty powerful. Yeah, you're in, not locked in, in the sort. arena with the boss. The boss is locked in the arena with you. <laughs> Yeah, you wanna you wanna slowly skim it to death. That's your choice. Yeah, so I think it's just that both Prim and I don't value survivability that much, like survivability based characters that much. Yeah, I I value survivability, but not at the expense of action. If I can help it, like I want my action economy to stay intact for for offense as much as possible. And, you know, using a character slot and then a bunch of moves uh, when I don't have to is just never something I'm going to do. Um, so it's just something like if the content is hard enough and hits hard enough, then I think um, that's the only time I'm going to use a character like Gloria. I mean, right now in that yeah. slot, I'm using Millard EX because it also mm -hmm. comes with the damage amp along with being able to use it for that. And I've been having fun doing that. It's definitely losing me turns. But it's fun. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I think she's a. I think like it's a good case for the first thing in maybe, just because the devs say they want to make her relevant, but they have, have yet to do that. And if they find yeah. a way to make her relevant, then she will be. I think she, I think they'll find a way to make her relevant for, at least like a lot of different uh, rosters. Like for for most people, I think because 
whenever they do add content that's hard enough, the fight will be long enough for her kid to add a lot of value. They need to make survivability relevant again. Yeah, which I I really think they they can They're and probably they going to should yeah. So so I think cool. also her pull party is going to be based on ring a bell. So why don't we actually rate ring a bell right now too, and then we can decide where to put her right. Because right. don't they don't they share a pity? I think they do. Do they? I. Yeah, Gloria and Ringabel have separate banners with shared oh, fragments. Oh, shared fragments. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred frags to pretty. Uh, we got we got a little Ian coddling. <laughs> a little. Uh, well, we'll find out, but you know. Yeah. Okay. So let let's talk about Ringabel then. Sure. Um, all right. So my opinion on Ringabel is that. His kit looks like a whale character, but then because the content is easy, everyone can abuse him. You don't need to go beyond one break. And then he's going to be significantly stronger than Erica Odio Santos. And then, I don't know, that's it. it. It depends on like how long you're willing to wait. Because the longer you wait, actually, um, the, re- the less relevant so- sword becomes because the other damage types come into relevancy and are even stronger mm-hmm. become even stronger than sword so then you don't like you're not really forced to bring sword anymore or sword pierce at that point so then like it kind of depends on that but i think yeah. um i think he's fairly strong 10 hit uh he has this undying gimmick that's also really nice it's like a, mm-hmm. for a fight that you know has a lot of hits you can't really dodge tank it and then if you run a traditional tank, you have to run mitigation. But then with him, he just doesn't die. So you can just get the taunt on him for an accessory or something like that. Yeah, and, then... and also, if you can time it, then the August cat would also work. Yeah, so that you can extend it even longer. Yeah, and you probably want the August cat on him anyways, if you're doing a ring about carry. Yep. Yeah, but the so the August cat uh, the August cat comes online on turn four, but that's also when uh, Sereno A four falls off. So it's just like full coverage on taunt. Yeah. So, well, did we forget the overview? Uh, so he ring bell is like a selfish sword DPS that also pierces dark, and his main strength is that he has like a ten hit that has. Not very, not very much requirement. It's just turn four and onwards. It's unlocked, and that means for a five turn one break or longer, it's just unlocked, <laughs> and yeah. it is very strong. It's a nine hundred potency ten hit, so that's very strong, and it also pierces dark, which is very nice. <laughs> so he pairs very well with Odoo. Like you pretty much would end up using them in the same team. He also has a self buff, usable once per fight, and yep. it gives him up to six turns of, first of all, three BP regen per turn. Yep, three BP regen. And well, that means you can just max boost for six turns every turn. Yep. And his HP can never go below one, except via insta-death abilities. So, you know, the um, 100 NPC f- turn 15, 16 nukes, but other than that, he's not going to die. Yeah. Uh, and oh, then even and when he does die, he still has yeah. another passive that auto-revives him once when he does die. <laughs> yeah. And then, n- not only that, actually, like, it's not like he's completely trash garbage after his two uses of ex like if you do a one break and it doesn't kill and you need to limp into your second break he still has like a five hit 500 total potency move it's not terrible right it's usable so you can like if it's like barely not a one break or like if you need to break again and a seven hit ulti for the getting back to that second break quickly yeah he has a seven hit aoe ulti yep oh and he has I guess this is not new to EN anymore, but his A4 is guaranteed critical. Yep. That, that, <laughs> that's like... that's just, just, just that. 
yeah if it's it's like nft a4 except uh nft's a4 gives sp and a little bit more attack and his gives you a thousand hp so it's it's slightly better but it's you know but nefty's is uh yeah yeah, it's shardable yeah yeah and his is not so i would not recommend going that deep on his and i mean unless you're a giga whale then you don't care Mm. uh but i'm not really sure if i would put him tier one though that's the thing i Mm. I think tier two is definitely like uh reasonable (laughs) yes Um, i don't have him i'm fairly comfortable without having him though yeah and part of that is just because like we're not really in sword meta anymore in JP as well. Like it's, yeah. Know. Okay. Uh, with him Soria, in tier two. I, th- I think we can yeah. just put them in tier two for now. I think that's reasonable to put them in tier two. Mm. I feel pretty comfortable with this. Um, I would lean on Gloria, maybe. Same. Gloria, maybe. Mm. Just because we don't know if we don't know if it's if survivability. It's going to be in a way that Gloria can support. Yeah, I mean, I mean, probably. It, yeah, Even if they make survivability might... more important, they have to make it very important for her. Very important. <laughs> yeah. But I, if they make it Giga important, then for, for the free to play players, she's just like tier one. Yeah. Like, like really, so, if, such if, a... if, if the fights become really hard, she's going to be like one of the best characters in the game for free, for low budget players. I think, yeah, that's a, the... I think that's a good justification for maybe, though. Really? Maybe, maybe it's not like it's bad. Skip is it's the bad. Problem, maybe is, is it's not relevant the, yet. Well, here's the problem. The problem is that she's a collab character, and if you skip her, it's not really like oh, it, it becomes they, like maybe they maybe she will come back BD. at some point. They love it. <laughs> I guess. Look at look at our friggin' near. It just never reruns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, will you even pull if they rerun near? Yeah, but like that's the problem with Gloria, right? Okay, let's say they add harder content starting from JP one like two point five Annie or whatever three point five Annie, three point five yeah three point five Annie. Then like oh, you're not gonna have her for like another year, or or like eight months or nine months or whatever. Mm. I don't know. I it's hard for me to say. I think okay. All right, all right. We'll put her in maybe. We need to fill our fill our stuff up anyways. But I. I'm still I'm still thinking that she's gonna be bumped up to tier two over time. That's my prediction, at least. Mm-hmm. Grieg is like Grieg. her, her A four is pretty good, but you can skip her because like her A four is good, but it has to go on that DPS unit, and it's not like we're gonna it's stop damage getting... cap up and max HP yeah. up. We have a lot of we already have a lot of A fours that give damage cap up, and we're only gonna get more. I think like if you're just gonna Yeah, it's a pretty selfish damage cap up. No attack yeah. on it. It's it's good enough that Giga Whales would still go for it because she's like one of the first units released in Celestia. And so like you're gonna be you're gonna be able to use her A4 uh right away and for a little while quite a while. I mean even now you can probably still use her A4, but I don't think it really is on the same tier as a uh, special alt. A4, it's like a little bit below that, probably. So maybe as, and also as a unit, I think you don't need more tanks or something like that. I think you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to add to that, Grape? She's a very classic taunt tank with, well, she has now a priority 30% self, uh, for self fist and Ellie death up 30%, um, and taunt in one skill. So that's pretty action efficient, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't, and if you can guarantee that you you don't otherwise die from AOEs, then you don't need further um, mitigation. She's otherwise kind of awkward to use because, like, she has these random, well, not random, but like, um, like fist death down and fist attack downs, but like, like. She needs to get hit a few times before those come into effect. And then like and then there's also the fact that there there are lots of tanks that can that you can use in lieu of her. Yeah. Uh, and then she's also gen pool, so you can randomly spook her. 
Yep. Um, if you somehow find that you want Greek at a later point in time, you can just pull on any uh, Twin World banners. You can um, even spark her on them. Yeah, and then you can just grab her like off the, that at any time. Yeah, the, the fact that she's like the first Twin Worlds gem pool unit as well is also not helping her case. Yes, uh, for some context, Twin Worlds is a new type of standard banner, I think. Um, just basically not um, your new gen pool banner where the fragments carry over, even if it's like a, if you use free rubies and you can spark any uh, Twin World banner characters at any point in time with, I think, 150 frags, yeah. This, I don't think there's a strong justification for you, um, for first of all, a taunt tank like that, without because she doesn't do much except eat damage. Like I think in summary, if you're talking about tanks, like if you if you already have tanks like Ex Hornet, Ex Fior, and yeah. also you have Ulbrich, you're covering all your bases. Ulbrich helps cover for you for this new mechanic called direct hits, which. EX um, Fiora is not very good at handling. EX Fiora just handles anything that's mostly single target or random target oriented. She just blocks everything, but it's, especially if it's of the same uh, split, or physical or elemental. And then EX Hana is just like probably your best traditional taunt tank because she can dodge half the hits and all she, she also has a bunch of AoE debuffs. And with that, that will end part one of this series of episodes for the podcast. Just like last time we did this list, it took over five hours in recording. So I'm doing my best to condense it, make it listenable, you know, cut out anything that we repeat over and over again during a certain section, stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you're looking forward to the next part. And as always, I want to thank Prim and Grape for all of their time in that five hours of recording. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. So I appreciate you. And uh, I know that everyone listening does too. So I will link Prim's YouTube channel below. Grape does not post videos, but you can show him love in the discords and hopefully he won't block you. <laughs> but with all of that said, please go check out Prim. Of course, he posts his speed clears. He posts his builds, stuff like that. So if you're into that kind of content, definitely go check it out. It is linked in the description down below. And I will see you guys in part two of the updated priority pool list. Much love. Stay safe. Until next time. A boo. Yeah, yeah.